Let's begin the class with the case scenario. A 6-year-old woman presented with history of shortness of breath for 4 months that has progressed to an extent that she is unable to do her daily activities. She uses three pillows to sleep and often wakes up during sleep with difficulty to catching her breath. Her medical history includes hypertension, dyslipidemia and diabetes mellitus and a history of triple bypass surgery done 4 years ago. Her current medications is aspirin, etrostatin, amlodipine and metformin. So here we have an elderly female who comes with dyspnea on exertion. She has dyspnea on exertion, she has orthopnea and she has PND. So these all symptoms could be suggestive of a cardiac disease, possibly an LV failure, the left ventricular failure. So that's what we can infer from this history. She has risk factors for the same, she has hypertension, she has diabetes and she has a coronary artery disease in the past. So possibly this patient has had these risk factors and that's why she developed an ischemic heart disease and secondary to that the LV dysfunction has happened and LV failure has happened. So this is what you have uh, inferred from this presentation. Now why she has had a heart disease from 4 years, why it has acutely precipitated for the past 4 months. So why has it worsened now? So that is what we will have to evaluate. Her current medications include aspirin, etrostatin, amlodipine and metformin. So she is on medications for all of that. When you examine her vital signs are stable. Physical examination reveals bilateral diffuse crackles in the bases there. An LV S3 is present, elevated jugular venous pressure and she has a 2 plus pitting edema. So she has signs of congestive cardiac failure. So she has signs of right heart failure as well as left heart failure. So she has basal crepitations and S3 which are signs of left heart failure and pedal edema and JVP which is suggestive of right heart failure. So this patient has evidence of congestive cardiac failures, heart failure of both the right and the left ventricle. That's what we can find. When you evaluate, you find that her ECG shows a normal sinus rhythm with LVH. So that's possibly secondary to the hypertension. Chest X-ray shows vascular congestion. So that means there is pulmonary edema that this patient is having. A laboratory test says the PNP is 874 picogram per ml and a troponin is 0.22. So this is suggestive of a cardiac. So whenever we do a BNP that's elevated, that is more suggestive of a cardiac cause of breathlessness that's there. A thyroid profile is usually done because thyroid toxicosis can precipitate heart failure. So that is also normal. An echocardiography demonstrates a systolic dysfunction, a mild mitral regurgitation, a dilated left atrium and an ejection fraction of 33%. So here we have a patient who has heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So when the heart failure ejection fraction is less than 40%, we call that heart failure as a, a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So this is the diagnosis that we have in our patient and how will you manage? So we have to know the comorbids the patient has. So here is diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia is there and a coronary artery disease now has heart failure. So we'll have to look into the precipitating heart features which can precipitate this heart failure. The most common cause for precipitation of heart failure is an arrhythmia. So possibly an arrhythmia would have occurred and that could have precipitated but the ECG is normal here. Second is anemia which can precipitate heart failure. So this patient is an aspirin, so she can have a GI bleed and anemia and that can precipitate heart failure, so we'll have to evaluate for that. Next, any infection can precipitate a heart failure, so patient could have had a, a lung infection or maybe a, a urinary tract infection, significant that can precipitate heart failure. Next is an infarction, so patient can develop a MI and that can precipitate heart failure. So these are the four important causes that can precipitate heart failure. The other important feature that could precipitate heart failure is uh, if the patient has stopped the medication or non-compliance to medication. So this patient has been on good medications. So we have to now manage this case. So this patient has a heart failure. So this patient would require to be started on diuretics. That's the first thing. You may have to require to them to start on ACE inhibitors or ARBs. You may have to start the patient on other medications which can improve the ejection fraction. Also, it could relieve the edema of this patient. So this is how we are going to manage this case. And more in detail, we'll be discussing about in today's session of heart failure. So what is heart failure 
and what is the sequelae and what is the causes that's what we are going to discuss so pathophysiologically the process where the heart as a pump is unable to meet the metabolic requirement of tissue oxygenation despite of uh, adequate venous return to the heart or sometimes the venous return might be decreased sometimes the venous return might be increased low output high output but where this failing happens the heart is unable to pump enough of blood and that condition pathophysiologically is called as a heart failure most of the heart failures generally result due to an enlarged heart so the heart becomes uh, dilated and it, the pumping capacity decreases the ejection fraction falls and that results in the signs and symptoms of heart failure a very common disease that we encounter because multiple pathophysiological mechanisms can finally result in heart failure so it can result in structural or functional loss of a cardiac function there if it involves the volume or load we call it as a congestive cardiac failure so when the uh, patient has edema when the patient has raised jvp there is crepitations in the lung pulmonary edema we call it as a congestive cardiac failure where we have both right heart failure as well as left heart failure together so that together forms the congestive cardiac failure it's a common end stage result of many chronic heart disease be it valvular heart disease be it ischemic heart disease be it hypertensive heart disease or maybe arrhythmic arrhythmia which can precipitate a heart failure sometimes in congenital heart disease all of them can cause final end point that is the heart failure can answer it is one of the most common reasons for hospitalization in adults above 65 years of age and it can be a cumulative effect of a chronic work overload possibly a valvular heart disease or a hypertension or a ischemic heart disease or it could be an acute hemodynamic stress could be a mi could be an arrhythmia could be an acute valvular dysfunction all of them can precipitate a sudden heart failure so the uh, the effect of heart failure as well as the pathophysiological sequelae could be a chronic could be acute 